Uh, David, so thanks so much for joining us, much appreciated. Welcome. So, focus on the World Cup, just talk me through when you found out you are going to be going, how was that like? Uh, it was a bit crazy, uh, it was, uh, I think they had, they had a camp uh, the week before in Bahrain um, and I talked to the coach about going over, possibly going over there to join that camp but uh, they stayed here and we had a few games to play so uh, I wasn't sure what was going to happen uh, or when I'd find out if I was or wasn't in it um, and I woke up on the Saturday morning of the game against Motherwell I think it was uh, it was the last game before the World Cup and uh, I'd just getting ready as normal and checked my emails and I had one during the night uh, saying that I'd been selected um, and I just turned to my wife and I just said I'm in, I'm in the I'm in the group, um, I couldn't believe it. Uh, I, I kind of kept it quiet throughout the day because I didn't want to really speak about it because I had a game to focus on. Um, but obviously I phoned my, my parents and my brother and let them know what the story was and yeah, just uh, over the moon. It's hard to focus the game a wee bit just for that in the back of your A wee bit, yeah. You go, in, you go in a different sort of mindset. I try to just put it to the back of my mind but you can never really do that when it's such a important uh, and big milestone for myself and um, the thoughts of maybe getting injured during the game or or yeah, stuff yeah. like that happening uh, really sort of played a part a wee bit and but uh, just got on with it and um, I spoke to the manager just before the game just to let him know but he already knew that I was going to be in the squad which was <laughs> so he kept it from me uh, which is kind of funny um, but knowing yeah just uh, it was hard to focus on the game but I was obviously delighted. So how, obviously you must have told the rest of the team as well at some point after the game or at some point later on, how did they take it? Yeah, it, uh, they, it was uh, after, straight after the game, um, the manager sort of had a meeting after the game just to talk about the game and then afterwards he said uh, that I'd been selected to the whole group and sort of had a moment to myself uh, where I got a bit emotional because it was uh, it was just a, such a elation for me and the boys sort of recognised that, that, how hard I'd worked to to get into the squad and get back from uh, a big injury that I did yeah. and um, yeah they were just all buzzing, all buzzing for me and, and delighted. You mentioned the injury there, you kind of you were struggling with some stuff just before you went away um, was it the World Cup and the prospect of going, was that kind of getting you through that and helping you kind of push through? Yeah definitely, um, when I'd done the injury obviously it was, it was a, a shocker for me and um, I never really had such a bad injury um, yeah. before um, so it was tough to take, uh, but I knew that I'd done it in November and I had uh, sort of 12 months to, to try and get myself fit and get back uh, and available for selection. Yeah. Um, so that was that was my main motivation, uh, obviously to, to get back fit and playing yeah. first and foremost, but that at the back of my mind was the, the, the target and the aim for me. Uh, and I had that to, to work on and the coaches and staff and everyone, my family always supported me and gave me that boost every time I needed it throughout that, that sort of 12 months. So obviously going to the World Cup of Canada, with superstars like Alfonso Davies, Jonathan David and the team, what was it like kind of um, messing with them, playing with them, training with them? It's, uh, it's a bit crazy, it's yeah. surreal, like they're playing obviously at the top levels in the Champions League and winning Champions Leagues, yeah. uh, even the other boys around about me that are getting moves to the big clubs and, and playing at the top level, um, it's just great to be a part of. But you never feel out your depth, you never feel um, sort of not part of it, you always feel like you're one of the, one of them and uh, it's, it's a great atmosphere to be around. Um, but yeah, just to rub shoulders with the likes of them is, is fantastic and uh, I, I'm grateful for that every day I'm, I'm yeah. there. So you've got obviously over in Qatar, there's a lot said about being a Winter World Cup, it's all a bit surreal. How is it like for you personally being over there and experiencing it yourself? <sighs> just just to be there, it's just yeah. to be part of a World Cup is incredible, but where it was, it was, it was spectacular, it was, it was all brand new, it was all sort of state of the art and um, training facilities were fantastic. Obviously the weather was really hot, but I tried to stay out of it as much as I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah just over. acclimatizing to the heat uh, yeah. was, was tough, but uh, we trained at the times where the sun had gone down or um, sometimes we trained in the morning where it was hot. Uh, it was particularly just after games where, so we had the rest of the day to sort of recover from it. Um, but it was a great setup, a fantastic setup, well looked after. Uh, everyone was taken care of in, in the hotels, out of the hotels. They were great people. Um, 
and uh, it, was, it was thoroughly enjoyable. I enjoyed every minute of it, and my family managed to get over as well, which was Absolutely. even better uh, to sort of experience that with them yeah. and to show my kids what I was what I was doing was was extra special. It's good to hear. So obviously it's focused me a bit on like what you've done and your personal achievements. So it's good to celebrate those. But we're also can you hear us talk about the FIFA Pro World Eleven as well. What do you how important do you think it is to celebrate individual players' achievements and obviously be part of a bigger collective World Eleven team like that? Yeah, I mean personally, you want to be recognised for for what you do in the game yeah. um, by your fellow fellow pros, um, and this is a, a great opportunity for even the likes of us that are, that are here in Scotland to to sort of recognise. We're watching them every week. Uh, sure, yeah. We we watch them and admire these players that are playing at the top levels, and um, we just need to. I feel it's a great opportunity for us to show our, our recognition of of what they're doing for the game and the promotion they're they've got for the game. So yeah, I think it's a, a good a good exercise for us. Perfect. So it's been on the spot. You don't have to name a full eleven, <laughs> but um, just a few players you would say that would make your team. Yeah, obviously looking back on the World Cup, it was. Fantastic tournament! Uh, yeah. It was unbelievable. You, you hear, you see players that you've never watched before yeah. that that shine in these sort of tournaments, and it's it's great to watch. But you know the likes of likes of Messi and Mbappe are obviously right in there, and um, obviously the best players in the world. Um, but you always, as I said, you you recognise players that you've never watched before. Um, really shine in these tournaments like the Moroccan team, uh, a few individuals in there that you've never Absolutely, heard of yeah. that, that play at not the highest level but um, they've got some ability and uh, great great players. Um, so yeah, there's obviously a, a, a few to choose from but obviously you know the, the best players like Messi and Mbappe are always, always in there. Was anyone from Canada that released just stuck out to his uh, top four in the World Cup? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Estacio was, uh, Stefan Estacio was at Porto at the moment and he is, he was before the World Cup anyway, um, flying uh, in the Champions League top of the group and um, he was playing regularly uh, and then when he came to the World Cup he played exceptionally well in the first two games, unfortunately he got a wee knock on his hamstring that, that, oh, yeah. that, that he suffered with um, that pulled him out of the, the last sort of group stage game. Um, but he was he was fantastic. But even the likes of uh, uh, Ismail Kone, who's got a move to to Watford, uh, yeah. is been exceptional. Um, and obviously Alistair Johnson, who's now part of Scotland and playing at Celtic, uh, he's got his reward for his performance in that tournament. But obviously he's been working hard at Montreal to get that move. So who would be your and this is a, a tough question as well there's a plenty of debate about it and you can say Steve May if you want who would be your Ballon d'Or choice would you say? Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's been exceptional for us uh, over the years uh, I've always admired Stevie um, but no um, obviously Messi's yeah. done it all he's, his performance in the World Cup was exceptional um, just to, to do what he'd done uh, throughout the whole throughout the whole tournament um, but obviously Mbappe would challenge that because he really drove France to, to get to where they were I think yeah. uh, with his goals and his ability um, but yeah obviously about first choice would be Messi. So just one last one for you then, um, sort of speaking about recognition from your peers, your pros and such, what sort of one comment, one piece of feedback you've had for your career that's really stuck with you all the way through? <sighs> oh, there's been a lot. Of, I've played with obviously experienced pros and and uh, managers as well. Um, but yeah, just one that sticks with me is actually just when I was at youth, um, youth level. Um, there were a couple who just uh, he just said it was James McBride. Um, he was my coach at Celtic. Um, he said stick to stick to good habits. Yeah. Um, if you get into good habits, then you can go a long way and. And attitude as well. Uh, stick stick with a, a good attitude. Uh, it can take you a long way because you might not certainly have the the best of ability or the the best uh, skill set, but if you if you have a good attitude, it can take you a long way. And I feel like that stuck by me the my whole career. Uh, I feel like I've lived by that throughout my career and always gave a hundred percent. Good answer. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.